The Holy Gospel according to Luke. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was walking down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, and passed by the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling along, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put on him his own animal and brought him into an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, peace, and hope be yours from the God who so loves this world. Amen. In the summer of 2013, some 11 odd years ago, I attended my first pride parade. And I remember it vividly because my boyfriend at the time and I were going from the downtown area of Chicago into further downtown. And as we got together to go for this, I was really, really nervous. See, I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin where the closest thing to a rainbow you'd see would be maybe after a thunderstorm in the sky. Not really in churches or in schools, certainly not at government buildings. So as we traveled along and I started to get a little bit nervous, people started to get on the train next to us. We were holding hands, they would smile and go about their day. And then one couple got on, an old couple, two gentlemen who sat next to us. One of them, after maybe two or three stops into Chicago, leans over to me and he says, I really wish I could do what you're doing. I remember holding that space. As we went more and more into Chicago, more and more rainbows started to appear. People from all walks of life started to gather on this train. And suddenly my nervousness of shaking turned into a smile. And a sense of hope and a sense of joy filled me up. Perhaps my anxiety had been overshadowed by that rainbow. I remember that pride parade too, standing amongst the crowds as people flooded past in their floats and their celebrations, and all sorts of dress and undress was all in front of me. Wow, I thought. This is very different than the small town I grew up in Wisconsin. I thought a lot about that pride parade this last week. As I reflected on the text from Amos, as I thought about the Good Samaritan story many of us know so well, and I thought a lot about my own life in these last 11 years, and I thought how it's all becoming a process of becoming me. In the years since 2013, 11 years ago, I would, despite my opposition initially, attend seminary. I would marry the man who once held my hand on that terrain as I nervously shook in fear. I would become ordained in the backside of a church parking lot because of COVID, which I have to say is a great thing to share at parties. And I would also eventually become called here to University Lutheran Church as your next pastor. 
clearly in these 11 years, there has been so much to celebrate, so much in our church's history that has dramatically changed, so much in our nation's history that has dramatically changed. I remember as we were moving boxes into our small little Honda Civic, we got news that same-sex marriage became legal in all of the United States by an act of the Supreme Court. Who broke that news but my dad, who called me, who was following so closely along with the news. He said, I know you're busy packing, and I think that's really wonderful, but I've got something better to share with you. I remember hearing him crying on the other side of the phone, celebrating that good news. These 11 years, if I look at my life, have been some of the most amazing and blessed and some of the most privileged as well. I thought a lot about that again this past week as we're going to get ready to celebrate pride as we have adorned our sanctuary continuously more and more with rainbows. How when I drive down the streets of Seattle, I can't help but stumble over and trip over many a rainbow flag. Wow. I wish 11-year-old Andy knew that. 10-year-old Josie who's struggling with her sexuality Mark, who may be struggling with his gender identity or his expression. I wish those people saw what I see now. I thought a lot about that this last past week. So much so that I reached out to a friend from high school, a friend I had not talked to for quite some time. And when we reached out to one another, he now lives in a big city in Illinois, I live here in Seattle, we both reflected on how the world has dramatically changed and how pride parades and rainbow flags seem to be everywhere. And yet, and yet, during a month that is so full of celebration, where rainbows are visible everywhere, we still have the text of Amos Butting right against that says from God, I despise your festivals, I hate your music, I don't want any of this. You know how hard that was to preach? In my head, I'm going, okay, so if I want to do this, I want to say that, but God doesn't like these things, but we do like these things, and why do we keep doing these things? And I would go cross-eyed by Thursday afternoon when I wanted to write my sermon. But I think there's something important to note in the text of Amos. Something that we often miss when we read this passage. God does care about our celebrations and our festivals and our worship so long as they are tied to justice, so long as they are tied to liberation, so long as they have actual tangible action in our world that God so loves. Friends, the reality is right now is that though we celebrate pride in this congregation and in this city, there are places around this country and in this state and in this world where LGBTQ people are clearly under attack on a regular, easy-to-see basis. And that scares me to death. There are places in this country where parents can be thrown into jail because they dare to celebrate and honor who their child is becoming. There are places in this country where people are continuously told, we don't want to talk about that. Don't talk about that with the kids as the kids struggle to figure out who they are. We have created unsafe spaces rather than safe spaces. We have created spaces where people are silenced and shut up rather than embraced and where they can be brave. I often wonder, and it's not a question we all have to answer now, But as we come together as a populace, as a people, as a country, of a state, of a city, whatever, and as we gather and celebrate pride, I wonder if our churches do too. I wonder if our churches provide space for our youth and old folk to celebrate who they are in their fullness identity. That is a becoming process, not necessarily a solid process. That even maybe someone in 78 can live into their full sense of being and their full sense of identity for the very first time. Like the man who leaned over to me in the train and says, I wish I could do that. Friends, pride is a celebration, no doubt. But we also work every day 
for the liberation of LGBTQ people, to celebrate their rights that are so often threatened and sometimes taken away, to help them live into the fullness of who they are called by God to be and who they are loved by that God. We go from this place not only as a liberated people by God, but the people loved by God, called to liberate and love the world as well. Amen.